Welcome, welcome, Sean here with AO, ready for another little mentor session. Today I'm just gonna be answering just a few questions, so let's get right to it. The first question comes from Allison Koyanagi, and Allison says, how do I deal with employees lying to me? The background is, um, yesterday I found out that someone that works for me has been lying about the work she's been doing and using company time to do other work that has nothing to do with the tasks I assigned her. She also went against the confidentiality agreement um, she signed by using techniques and strategies I taught her for our agency's work for other work she's been doing and lying about it. Wondering how you've dealt with situations like this and how I should approach a situation. I wonder if I've actually already answered this, but I'm gonna answer it again just in case I didn't. And maybe I'll say something completely different, who knows. Okay, so how do you deal with employees lying to you? Well, the first thing is, is I would probably do it. So first off, I would really get emotional because I don't like somebody lying to me. So my initial instinct is that I'd wanna get real emotional and get upset and I'd wanna just charge in at them and be like, why are you lying to me? What's up and blah, 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 blah. And I would go into attack mode. That's the norm. The real way for a leader to deal with something like this is to not get emotional and to first go into discovery mode and ask questions and figure out what happened and why it happened. What I would do in this situation, if they were in person, I would um, bring them into my office or if they're remote workers, I'd say, hey, I wanna meet at the coffee shop or meet at a conference room, wherever you can meet that, you know, that's kind of neutral territory. And I would just tell them I wanna go over a couple things, you know, of a project. Cause I don't wanna tell them that I wanna, I wanna confront them about, you know, them lying or anything like that. I would first say, hey, um, you know, Joy, uh, I want to bring to your attention that I have heard about X and I have seen X and I want to kind of bring to their attention that I wanted to talk to them about this situation. Then what I would do is I would want to see if they're going to be honest with me and they're going to explain why they're doing what they're doing and what they're doing. I don't want to jump to conclusions unless I have in writing or whatever, and I'm just automatically gonna fire them because I have in writing and you can see that they've done. But a lot of times there's a little bit of miscommunication and confusion that can happen too, and I really wanna find out. It also depends on this too, Allison, if this is a W-2 employee in which you're taking taxes out of their check, so they actually work for you and only you, um, during certain office hours, or is this a 1099 contract worker in which you, it's an independent contractor? See, an independent contractor, in our agreement with our independent contractors, they can do work for us whenever they're going to do the work. They don't have to do it under certain times. So as long as they are completing the work that we are giving them and they're getting it done on a, at the time that we want them to get it done by, there's all kinds of laws that have to do with that. So we also wanna be really careful there. So I would need to know, is this a 1099 or a W-2 if I really wanted to give you good information? I'm assuming it's a 1099 from based on conversations that we've had in the past. Now, if they're breaking the confidentiality agreements, it's kind of hard to really prove to a court of law that somebody is using techniques and strategies that you have taught them, you know, that that's really difficult. Um, gosh, that's a tough one. <sighs> that's a really, really tough one. I would need to know a little bit more detail on this. That's where it's sometimes it's hard to know from something you've typed to really understanding what they're doing. But in this situation, let's get back to the facts. Somebody broke your confidentiality, they broke your trust, they're doing something you don't like, and it's time to have a conversation with them. I wanna sit them down, have a conversation, and ask them questions. Why are you doing this? What's going on? And I wanna find out what the relationship is like between me and this person. Are they down on their luck? Are they behind on bills? Do they need to make extra money? Like, are they desperate? you know, or are they maliciously trying to screw me over? I want to try to use my best judgment to determine what's really going on. Because sometimes we might think that somebody is already 
is trying to screw us over, but in reality, they're just down and they're depressed or they're broke and they need more money and, and, and I don't know all of this. So I really wanna, if I really care about this person, which I should if I hired them, I wanna find out what's going on. That's what good leaders do is we try to figure out what's really going on with the people that we're doing business with before we jump to conclusions. Um, so that's what I would do is if an employee was lying to me or a 1099 worker was lying to me, either one, I'd want to find out why. What's going on? What did I do to them or what didn't I do for them that would make them think that they couldn't always be open and honest and transparent with me? I want to know that because that's going to help me learn how to be a better leader uh, with other people because maybe there's other people doing it and I don't know. I just haven't caught them yet. So if I know that my I have shortcomings on something, I do that. Um, if it's malicious, if it's nothing that I've done, then I want to basically remove their usernames and passwords, collect any work stuff and say, you know, take care. You know, you've made the decision to no longer work for my, work for my company or represent my company. But that's what I would do. Find out what the deal is, get to the bottom of things, have good conversation and then find and then and then adjust where the conversation is going to go once you know. OK, because maybe you can build a better relationship with this person and they don't feel they need to hide things from you or if they're just maliciously trying to screw you over, we, you can just put a stop to it. OK, um, but remember, at the end of the day, whether it's employees or 1099 workers, we can't always prevent people from screwing us over. And at the end of the day, most of us, especially if we are small business, we're not going to end up taking somebody to court who's stealing our company lists, our customer lists, our technology. We're probably not going to do anything. It's, we're going to be really pissed off and we're going to want to do something about it, but we usually aren't going to have the money and the time and the resources to really take somebody to court. So this is why it's really important for us as owners to maintain a relationship with all of our clients and make sure that anything that we do or our freelancers or employees do with our clients always comes from the business. The relationship is always, oh, it, my name is Sean and I represent AO. If you have one of your workers, their email address should be XYZ at your company name. And then you just shut their emails off and then um, change, the, or change the password so they can no longer get those emails and then send out a communication to all the customers that they may or may have had contact with and let them know in a nice professional email or phone call, depending on the size of your company, hey, Mr. Smith, I wanted to let you know that John is no longer with our company. Here is your new point of contact. Here's their email and their cell phone, or here's my information if you need to get a hold of me and keep that relationship with customers to let them know. That's some of the things we can do to keep those clients on board with our company. So long answer all over the place a little bit, but these are all kind of just the, the special dynamics and the complex complexities of you know managing these types of situations. So I hope that helps. If it sparks up another uh, question, uh, go ahead and ask another question. Okay, and speaking of, the next question comes from Joseph Gallo. And Joseph says, how much should I invest as a clothing startup in website design and marketing with a firm. The background is I have the trademark and now I want to work with someone who can provide guidance on my next investment, which is website and marketing. Okay, uh, you specified you also want Tony to answer this. I'm gonna get a couple other mentors to answer this for you as well. So I can tell you that I just hired a marketing agency and I just hired them and it's $4,000 a month. And they are building me out a complete brand new corporate website. They're going to manage all of my sales and lead pages. They're going to work with me on all of our lead magnets, opt-in pages. Um, they're going to run my ads. So that doesn't include the actual media buying. That's just their fee for right now in the beginning phase. Once all of it's built, a portion of that 4,000 will go to agency fee and a portion of that will, will go towards media buying on F Facebook and Instagram and anywhere else we choose. But that's how much I'm paying. I can tell you this from firsthand. Um, one of the benefits of using an agency is to do marketing, you need graphic design, web 
programming and coding, copywriting, um, someone who understands just the the, strat the strategy around how a page is laid out, which sometimes that's a special type of skill. You need someone who can be a creative agency director to manage the entire process and work with you on strategy. It is very, very difficult to find one person who can be a copywriter, graphic designer, web designer, which can be different, web programmer, for Shopify store, WordPress, Wix, or whatever application your good platform you're going to use, someone who understands in the, the the functionality and layout and strategy around website sale and and then sales pages, opt-in pages, and then doing all of the email marketing that has to do with it, then understanding actually how to convert and manage all of your audiences on Facebook and Instagram. It is virtually impossible for one person to be an, a true expert at all of that. Doesn't mean that those experts don't exist, those unicorns, but that's one of the benefits of doing business with an agency. So with that said, I'm paying $4,000 a month. I'd be more than happy to make an introduction to the company that I'm using, but I can tell you this, before you want to go down that road, it's really important that you already have a brand identity kit and all of your logo packages all in one great file. So you want to have your logo and, and the master the master logo file, as well as all the different ways that your logo would be, like vector and RG, whatever. There's all kinds of ways that you, you get your logo in different formats. Then you want to have your your primary and secondary color palette done, and you want to have your font or your topography, headers, subheaders, body, and all that stuff done so that when you hire your agency to do your website or your sales pages or your advertising and all that stuff, you just hand them this identity kit so that they know how to represent your brand. It also helps, when I already had this onboarding call with them, it also helps when you can give them your brand strategy, which is already complete, which is what is your vision for the company? What's your mission? Who is your ideal client and why? What is your unique selling proposition? And also the understanding of all the processes of how you deliver your product and service to your customers. All of that gets taken into, into um into the equation when they're going to build out your website and your marketing for you. So that's why it's so important that you get your brand strategy done first, your brand identity kit done, and then you go to messaging, which is your website and your marketing. I searched for about two months for different agencies to manage this for AO. And I can tell you the prices ranged from the 4,000 I got, which I got a pretty good deal because I got, it was a relationship up to $10,000 a month. It can get really expensive. And this is why it's really important to know all of your brand strategy and stuff and be ready to pull the trigger. Because think about this, if you were in B2B and you were going to hire a salesperson and not do marketing, but you were going to hire a salesperson, a B2B salesperson to go out there and sell for your company these days, you're talking at least 50 to 60 grand a year salary to get a good salesperson to come work for you. You might be able to get somebody for 30 to 40 who might be a beginner. It might just be a business development representative, a BDR, someone who's going to set appointments, but you're going to have to go in and help close the deal. So if you think about that, 60 grand a year, 50, 60 grand a year for incentive compensation or full compensation to a salesperson. If you're the type of company that's going to do marketing and advertising instead of have a salesperson, that's the same thing as four grand a month, right? So agency you know, or a salesperson is going to run about the same amount if you are ready to truly start scaling and selling your product. All right. Hope that helps, Joe. If that helps spur some additional questions, you need some, if you need to get in touch with someone that can help get done with your brand strategy, I'm going to be covering this on our monthly Zooms and I can help get you some guides to where you can try to do some of this stuff on your own. I can also make some introductions. If you need someone to help you with your brand identity kit, 
send me an email and I can connect you with the person that I'm using for your logo and your brand identity kit assets. Um, so just let me know. But that's my experience share of that whole process. It's very complex and that's why it's really important to use an agency to try to facilitate you hiring each and every one of those parts all by yourself using Fiverr or Upwork or one of those other websites. Whoo! Can't even imagine trying to do it myself. All right. Hope that helps. Let me see if we've got any more questions here. That was the rest of them, I think, are Lindsay. So Lindsay actually had one question that I'm going to answer. The rest of Lindsay's are going to go to Joel. But this is one question that came in from Lindsay Grifka. And she's coming to AO Live next month. And she says, what are the best ways to prepare for AO Live 2021? Uh, I have two main focuses along with the map worked out. I want to discuss with mentors. I'm going to be open-minded and open to construction, constructive feedback. I'm going to learn more about my fellow tribe members that will be attending. What else can I do to properly prepare and really make the most of the conference? I tell you, one of the things you could do, Lindsay, is really come prepared with exact answers to what is your vision statement? What is your mission statement? What is your unique selling proposition? Like what really makes you unique in the marketplace compared to any other type of competition? Who are your competitors? Okay. And then also, what is your buyer persona? Who is your ideal client and why? And really understand that. All right. Um, now, and here's another thing, just in case you're saying, well, I don't really have any competition because some people do say, I don't really have any competition. Listen, we all have competition. We may not have people that do exactly what we do, or may, we may even be generating a brand new product or service category in which nobody does what we do. But remember, we always have competition because when we're asking somebody to give us dollars that they might already be spending somewhere else or even investing or saving, our competition might be that they don't even have a need and we're going to create a need or they might be getting entertainment or doing something from somewhere else. We always have competition and we're going to take money from somewhere else that somebody is spending it or saving it. So that could be your competition. Our biggest competition for AO is not another organization or an individual coach. It's people that are doing it themselves. They're going to Google and just typing in trying to figure out help. They're reading books. They're listening to uh, podcasts. They're going on a clubhouse and listening to all these millionaires, but they're not having conversations. That's our competition. It's not, it's not direct competition, but it's competition. It's not another organization. It's just another place, another outlet. So think about that. So that's how you could come to AO 2021 is come with some questions for sales, marketing, building out your business model, building out what kind of team members and how to be a good leader and how to interview, how to manage employees, because we're going to have Tom there for sales training, we have Dan there for business model and processes. We're going to have Marsha for team building and leadership. And then we're going to have Peter for advertising and marketing. So there's going to be four coaches at AO Live. And if anybody else is watching this, if you're not coming to AO Live and you still want to, two people had to drop out. So if you do want to come, uh, just shoot me a message. And this, this weekend is amazing. It's February 26th to the 28th and would love for you to be there. All right. Hope that answers your question, Lindsay. For anybody else, what's up, Aniza? What's up, Shelly? Good to see you guys in the comments here. All right. Tag anybody that needs to watch this live that I'm doing right now. Just tag anybody that you know in the group that is like, shit, you need to listen to this, all right? Um, and I hope you guys understand the new processes because the new processes are, if you ask the question, uh, Honey, my virtual assistant is going to download this video, get it up to YouTube, bookmark it, and send you your answer. Super, super cool. You're also going to get an email uh, saying who else is going to answer this question for you for the, for the few uh, other questions that I answered, all right? So I hope that helps. Thanks, Lindsay. Absolutely appreciate it. Can't wait to see you. And that is today's live stream. I will see you guys on the flip side. Have a great day. Peace out.